and four losers of the NBA trade deadline of 2018. Let me know what you guys think down below. Who won? Who lost? I'm going to go a little bit in each of these trades, but if you guys want a full breakdown of all the trades I mentioned, let me know down below in the comment section. I'm going to go in depth in a few. Isaiah Thomas trade. That was that was a crazy trade. I can't believe Isaiah has gone from Boston to Cleveland to now the Lakers playing with Lonzo Ball and under Magic Johnson, hopefully recruiting Paul George in the offseason. We'll get, we'll get into it. But how crazy would this 2018 trade deadline? Let's talk about four winners and four losers. The first winner is not even a team. It's LeBron James. And this is the reason why LeBron James won. In a way, what the Cavaliers did was prepare for the future... They got some young pieces, Rodney Hood's a, a lot younger, Jordan Clarkson's a lot younger, Larry Nance is a lot younger, but for LeBron James, in a way it's almost a little bit of a scapegoat, because LeBron James obviously wants to win a championship, now he's going to have to try and get all this new chemistry with a lot of new guys on the team, I mean, I woke up and literally on my phone I was like, hold up, the Cavaliers lose half their team? And it's literally no joke. They lost about half their team. It is insane what the Cavaliers did this trade deadline. Like they just went ham. They traded half the squad. Channing Fry, Isaiah Thomas, Jay Crowder, Dwayne Wade, Iman Shumpert. I mean, all they really kept was a few guys. But you are probably thinking, how does LeBron James benefit out of all these trades? And number one, like I said, is it, it is a little bit of a scapegoat. When LeBron James goes in towards the playoffs, there will be that, oh, well, look, they traded about half their team, so it doesn't really matter that he didn't make the NBA Finals. Some will argue, nah, he shouldn't make the NBA Finals. He is one of the best players in the world. We don't know what LeBron James is doing, and that's the thing. The Cleveland doesn't know what LeBron James is doing. In my opinion, at this point in time, it went from about a 40% chance he was going to stay in Cleveland to about a 25% chance. And I will make a video on where I think LeBron James could go this offseason. So if you want to see that video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new. But LeBron James did win in that sense. It is a little bit of a scapegoat. But he did actually gain some solid players. George Hill, Rodney Hood. They still got Kevin Love, remember that. Kevin Love and LeBron James, those two are still a dynamic duo in the Eastern Conference, okay? And you pair that up with George Hill, Rodney Hood, Jordan Clarkson's a solid scorer off the bench, a little bit better than Derrick Rose, just because he's younger and more fresh. Larry Nance is a solid power forward to replace Kevin Love while he's injured. Not the best, but he can do some high-flying dunks, and who doesn't love a dunk? So LeBron James, we don't actually know, but I won't count him out at this point. Jordan Clarkson, like I said, a combo man. He can play off the ball, with the ball. It's just a nice fit. The Cavaliers lose a lot of their old guys, gain some younger guys, which means they can prepare for the future with that Brooklyn Nets first round pick. And if LeBron James does decide to leave, at least they have a backup plan, which is something they didn't have in the summer of 2010, where the Cleveland Cavaliers just went into shambles. So the Cavaliers are happy, and now LeBron, I guess, could be happy as well. He still has Kevin Love, he still has a solid core around him, George Hill can prove himself a little bit, he played very well last season, so there's a lot of issues with this team still, but it's not worse, it's not better than before. Let's just see how it goes in the second half of the year. And if it doesn't go well, LeBron James has his opportunities in free agency. And at this point, no one can really blame him for leaving if he does decide to leave. Anyway, that is for another video. The second team that I have being a winner in this year's trade deadline is actually the Lakers. Remember, they want Paul George. Paul George has openly stated he would love to play in LA. And now the Lakers have potentially traded for an all-star, if not star player on their team. If Isaiah Thomas can somehow bounce back to the Boston Isaiah Thomas that a lot of people knew and loved, if he can somehow do that, the Lakers have traded for a star to pair up with Brooke Lopez, who in the past has been an all-star, but they are both going to be heading into free agency. Which means, well, the Lakers are going to have tons and tons of cap space. In fact, they have an incredible $69 million in cap space. That is enough money for two max players, such as Kawhi Leonard, Klay Thompson, 
Jimmy Butler in 2019 to pair up with Kyle Kuzma and point guard Lonzo Ball. In addition with Brandon Ingram, if those young guys can key up some games, play well together, show that they can be potential all-stars in the league, this team can be insane for the future. They've got Isaiah Thomas. They can potentially sign Isaiah Thomas back, or they have, if he doesn't play well, they can have the ability to let him go in free agency if he asks for a max contract and they don't want to make that deal with him. It's a really nice position that the Lakers are in. Of course, they didn't trade Julius Randle, which they were looking for a first round pick, but it's not the end of the world. They still have him for the remainder of the season and he is still a restricted free agent. So we'll see what happens with Randle. But it was obvious what the Lakers were trying to do, clear out as much cap space as possible. And that's exactly what they did. And they gained Isaiah Thomas with it. That is very, very solid with a potential Paul George and even LeBron James pairing this offseason. I just want to say shout out to the Lakers, you did an amazing job. The next winner I have is the Eastern Conference. With Cleveland making such moves, no one knows how the Eastern Conference or the Cleveland Cavaliers will look in the second half of the year. Now this leaves the door wide open for an Eastern Conference Finals matchup between the Boston Celtics, the Raptors, the Miami Heat, even the Detroit Pistons. Who knows? Who knows? I'm very excited to watch this second half of the year and don't count out Cleveland. We've seen teams that have made trades and people have just been like, wow, why would you? Oh, wow, that was a good trade, man. It happens all the time, all right? So I'm just saying, don't just jump off the Cleveland bandwagon if you're on it right now. If you're a LeBron James cash nest, I'm just saying, don't jump off it right now, okay? You gotta stick with your team. And I'm saying the Cleveland Cavaliers might not be as bad as people think they're gonna be. But it does leave the door wide open if they are. The Miami Heat have just acquired Dwayne Wade. And after losing Dion Wade as this, well, this season at the start of the year, the Miami Heat have been in a little bit of a weird situation at that two guard position. They acquired Wade for a second round pick. I'm excited. I'm a Heat fan. I'm so happy. Dwayne Wade has come back. Flash, welcome back. I just wanted to say that. We have Goran Dragic, Dwayne Wade, and Hassan Whiteside. In the playoffs, Dwayne Wade... When he has his rest, and I don't know if he's going to come off the bench, if he's going to start, I don't know. But we could make some noise in the playoffs. Boston, obviously, the Raptors could. There's just a lot of teams, and I'm excited for the Detroit Pistons. That is another winner that I have, and I know it wasn't during the trade deadline, but I just want to give them a shout-out. They are a winner this NBA trade deadline, because obviously it wasn't a trade deadline, but it was a trade during the week of the trade deadline, so I'm counting it. The Detroit Pistons are a winner. I already made a video on it. If you guys want to watch the video, I'll leave a link down below. I was saying that I don't know how it's going to turn out, but at this point in time, Drummond and Blake Griffin have been benefiting off each other. It was a very solid move by the Detroit Pistons. Now, let's quickly dive into the losers. And there actually isn't too many losers this year. I'm not even going to lie. A lot of teams like the Lakers and the Cavaliers, they both kind of won. Even the Clippers, we don't know what they're going to do. They, they didn't trade DeAndre Jordan. If you count that as a loss, I mean, you can. But DeAndre, I don't know. I mean, it's not like the Clippers are going to be that bad anyway. They still got Lou Williams. They did sign him to a contract for a couple years. But let's be honest, that contract is probably just going to be a sign and trade type of deal. I don't believe they've lost yet. I do believe there are a few teams that did lose, but they're not really anything major. So the Memphis Grizzlies, well, they're a team that a lot of people thought would make some noise this trade deadline, considering they have Chandler Parsons, Tyreek Evans, Marcus Gasol, Mike Conley, and they're the worst team in the NBA. Well, one of the worst anyway. It's just one of those teams where they're not gonna do well. Their team and their core is becoming old. They just needed some first round picks. And they failed to find an offer for really anyone. Tyreek Evans was one of those guys. They couldn't even get a second round pick. And when they received calls for Marcus Gasol, they hung up quickly. And it just doesn't make sense. Marcus Gasol wants to be on a contending team. And the Memphis Grizzlies aren't going to be that. And they're just going to lose a lot of these guys even in the offseason. Or eventually they're going to end up trading him. And they could have probably got more value right here, right now during this trade deadline. That's my opinion on the Grizzlies. The second loser I have is the Celtics. And it's not really what they did do. It's just what they didn't do. I thought they'd be able to get a guy like Tyreek Evans from the Memphis Grizzlies. 
just for a first round pick. I mean, we all know how many first round picks the Boston Celtics have. With Cleveland playing so bad, this was the Celtics' opportunity to take that next step and be the best team for sure in the Eastern Conference. And they could have got Tyreek Evans for a first round pick. And remember, Tyreek is averaging close to 20 points, 5 rebounds and 5 assists coming off the bench in Memphis this season. So, when you think about it, it's just another guy they could have got. Just they could have got just for backup and he's still a very solid player, Tyreek Evans, just for a first round pick. They didn't do it. It's not really a loss, but it is still a 20 point score that they didn't get and they wouldn't really have to give up that much. So, whilst the Celtics didn't lose anything, they didn't really gain anything either, and for that, I'm gonna give them a loss. But if you're a Celtics fan, obviously you haven't lost anything, and you're still gonna be one of the best teams in the Eastern Conference, if not the NBA. The last loser I have, and this is really, there wasn't too many losers, so all the losers I'm saying, they haven't really lost, and we don't know just yet, but this guy, I feel like he should have been traded, Kenneth Fareed. Now, Kenneth Fareed, he's had a frustrating year to say the least, and he's just, he's not really getting too many minutes on the Denver Nuggets crowded front court when you think about it. They've got Millsap, they've got Lyle, like, he's just not getting many minutes, and he is still a solid player. And I thought they may be able to trade him, he could go to a team like the Bucks. For something, I mean, the Bucks need a big man, he could pair up with Giannis, Middleton, Parker, Bledsoe, with the, I mean, I thought it would be cool, but that didn't happen, he's still with the Nuggets, so we'll see what happens to Kenneth Fareed in the future, I just thought he'd be able to get traded for something good, I like Kenneth Fareed, I want him out of Denver, he deserves to be on a good team to win a championship, he's a just, he's a really good solid player to have on the bench. Anyway, those are my winners, those are my losers, let me know down below what you guys think in the comment section below. I want to hear your thoughts, and I really want to hear your thoughts. Leave a like if you guys enjoyed the video. Let's aim for a 1,000 likes. Subscribe if you're new to this channel. More NBA content coming soon. Breaking down a lot of these trades that did happen in depth. And I'll catch you guys in my next video. I'm out. Peace.